you know, we talked about how, you know, the weather is, is nice. Uh, doesn't feel like winter at all. Everything is at peace right now with the universe. Baseball has started down in spring training. Timberwolves are off of that terrible all-star break that they had, which seemed like three years and it was only like a week. The Wild are back from uh, uh, all-star break as well. And the Wild are playing a lot, a lot better hockey right now. Everything is in real feel-good mode. Um, but I think we should talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves here. Um, because, and oh, and by the way, you know, and I know that we, we bring this up quite a bit, but I got to keep doing it because he keeps giving us. So Minnesota Mike, not Conley, but the guy I work with, he gave you props. I, I had to ask him the same thing. We were talking about the NBA slam dunk championship. And I said nothing. He had not seen the, the last podcast had not aired. And he goes, you know what, man? The last dunk contest that was any good was Zach Levine. <laughs> it was, yep, yep. So I'm giving you, what do you call them? Flowers or whatever. Great minds think alike. That's great. Um, however, I had a conversation with Minnesota Mike this morning. And uh, I think he would agree with me. But I'm, I'm just wondering what your deal is. You know, the, the Wolves come out of all-star break. And it's back to one potato, two potato. One potato, I win one potato. Yeah, I know, I know it, but they shouldn't have. And I, it might've been a little hangover from All-Star break. That's fine. I'm not gonna chalk that up one way or another, but this is what I presented to Minnesota Mike. And um, I think that he agreed with me and I'm wondering what you're thinking. Um, I've already brought up the fact that to be number one defensively, that's great, but you are not in the top 10 in offense. And, and my, my good friend, Marty, said, oh, but late, wait, the last five or six games. I said, okay, that's great, good. But it's not the whole season. And you can get off that, that's fine. But I will say this, if the Wolves don't find secondary scorers on this team, I do believe that they're gonna, and they're gonna have trouble in the playoffs. And I'm not trying to be a, a doom and gloom guy or anything, Mr. Negative, because last week I was positive. But here's the deal. You can't have Edwards, Towns, and Gobert, who's not even really a scorer, score a majority of your points. And right now, you have nobody coming off the bench and doing it. Not, not really. And do you do you find this is a problem or not? I think it's funny because I I just think you know with the teams that we've watched in the past, we we always know what the what the issues are. And I think the offense. I mean. When you're one in defense a whole year, it's hard to talk shit about the defense, right? Yeah. Um, so you shift to the offense. The funny thing is, and I have the facts, um, the Timberwolves are fifth in offensive rating for the whole year, just so you know. For the whole, right, right now they are. Is that based on the last six games that they played? Because they were not, they were not, before All-Star break, they were not in the top 10. It, it takes a lot of, I don't know, what, you're, what I'm looking at is that all the culmination everything it, it is averaged out to right now they're fifth i think the defense overshadows the offense obviously with how good the defense has been um so it's just funny to look at talking about the, the offensive problem when you know you're still first in the west you're fifth in right. offensive rating and well, yeah they do have some issues know. right and it's it's it is tied uh with okc but um no, a secondary score. I mean, I, we've said it the whole year. They need one. Um, I, I like Monte Morris has been playing well in this backup role. I've seen he's he's playing a little more with Conley, which I think has been interesting. Um, had a good game the other day, but um, no, the, this team needs a score. I, I don't know what kind of level they're looking at on the buyout market. Something will happen. We have I don't, I don't think that they're going to do any anything. But but my you point was your spot. So what's that? We have two open roster spots. They got to fill it. They're going to sign someone. Okay. All right. Well, because here's the it, thing. I mean, Nas Reed has, well, has just say, it's it's not going to be a microwave score like a a Jalen right. Noel, but it, you're looking at a three point like a Joe Harris kind of. I'm I'm looking for a guy that could maybe score in double figures is what I'm looking for, and and I think that you need that because. You know, slow mo has gone away offensively completely. Nas Reed has not been consistent since 
the beginning of the year. Like I, and I don't know. And you know, I talked to Mike about this in the morning. Like when he gets his feet set, you know, it's going in, but it doesn't seem like he's in position all the time. It seems like a lot of his shots are forced. Um, and, and then it's like a 50, 50 kind of deal, but he just hasn't brought the same kind of fire that he did in the beginning of the year at all. Um, now you got, you know, shake Williams is gone. So what? He never did anything anyways. Um, Troy Brown gone. Never. He, I think he had one game, right? Um, Conley sometimes gives you that, but he's not gonna, he's not even going to score double figures every night, you know? So the, the one guy that they, there were rumors that it hasn't happened yet. Um, but I know that they, I think they want to sign is, uh, Mr. Marcus Morris. Yeah, I, I'd seen that. That that's been on the wish list for I think a, a couple months, right? Yeah, and and I, you know, he's he can get you. I mean, he, he can shoot the three. Um, he, to me, it's like an upgrade. And if you remember James Johnson, yep, adds you a, adds a lot of edge that I think helps in a in a tough playoff series. Maybe gives you a little bit of grit, kind of Patrick Beverly type type guy, right? Um, I just I don't I don't know what kind of guy there I, I can't remember right now who's on the uh, the bio list but um, I mean a Joe Harris can can get you a couple threes a game right um, Marcus Morris guy he, again he can shoot the ball he can play defense um, so I don't I think what right, right now you're looking at is I think they struggle with the three point shooting spacing sometimes on the bench with with what they the guys that they work in I I wouldn't mind a Joe Harris a guy who you know. Let him live on the perimeter and shoot. Three. I wouldn't either. Yeah, and I think um, that's what we're trending towards. You know, I, I like I say, I, I I'm not trying to, um, I'm not trying to be Mister Negative right now. But but all I'm saying is that I don't want to go in the playoffs. And and there's still a lot of teams that we talked about that just, you know, it, there's a difference between national media and fans. I guess what I give a fuck about what the average Joe at the Staples Center thinks about the Wolves. No, I don't. National media give us a little love, but there are still a lot of teams that think, uh, or players on different teams in the NBA that think the Wolves are going to be done in one round this year. Okay. And, and that's what is concerning to me right now when I say that we need secondary scoring because I don't want to see a deal like the third quarter against the Bucks, And I know that was the first game back from All-Star, but, but we've seen it before where we've had substantial leads and suddenly nobody can score. And, and here's the deal. We've known that Towns has had nights where they ain't going down, right? We've seen it with Edwards where he's making bad choices, whatever. So if, if you take either one of those guys out of the equation, as far as scoring your points, um, I, I think that's going to be a problem moving forward. And no, it, I, it that's happens. all I'm saying. It will. I mean, I, I think it helps when, I mean, when it when is offense the best? It's when the ball's moving. Yep. Um, and I and I I think that's great to to get a, a Molly Morris in here to to move the ball like a Mike Conley will. So at least you have that on the bench unit. Um, and I like that McLaughlin's your third string. I mean, Mane goes down, Conley goes down. You still got a guy who can come in and move the ball. And I think that'll be the key at this point because, yeah, I mean, Edwards and, and Towns, you know, they can be ISO scorers. But again, offense is the best when the ball's moving. And and I think that's that'll be the, the key right now. And we see when offensive ruts happen, it's typically the ball's not moving, right? Yep. Um, so well, I really yeah. and you, then you're dribbling into triple teams and you're playing ISO that just does not work. Um, and that's that's what that's what I worry about. The other thing is, and, and I don't mind saying it because you know, we did have uh, I believe one, maybe two guys that made the Johnny Voss rule, but I'm I'm gonna go back because it, as of right now, nobody is on the Johnny Voss rule that you have to um, really not like at least three people on on your squad. Jade McDaniels has officially made my list. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm not it's not because I'm a hater. Well, I Here's the deal. Offensively, he is a non-factor. When we want to talk about and this is a guy that we thought 
could not be take a huge portion of the the scoring load but this guy is an absolute non-factor he does nothing on the offensive side at all so okay you go okay well johnny's always playing the offense versus defense and what percentage oh you're in the top you're number one Jaden mcdaniel was signed we gave him the money and locked him up because of his defensive prowess okay are you seeing that this year not much and and you take away any kind of it's like four on five basketball offensively when he's on the floor because he does nothing if you take away the fact that his defensive reasons were why we were so excited in his fourth year you would think that he is a i don't think he's very smart second i don't know if he's as good as advertised right now i really don't because his defense is not where it was last year going into his injury for punching the wall well it's not it's absolutely not but the fact that we've seen him be successful he's got the talent he's yeah he absolutely has the talent so it's not that he's not good enough it's just right now he's in a massive slump he absolutely i mean he had the worst statistical week of his career this past week um and yeah he's gonna have to figure it out because honestly you play yourself off the floor in those situations like playoff situations um where the i mean so i don't know i i think he figures it out come playoff time i think that's when the lights shine bright i think a guy like a Nas Reed, a Jaden McDaniels, I think they turn stuff around personally. But yeah, he's absolutely been a borderline atrocious. So. Completely disappointing. Completely disappointing. And and that's why I said, I mean, the the second part that I said was I don't think he's as good as advertised, but you're you're right. He does. There's no reason we wouldn't have signed him for what we did and locked him up if we didn't think there was something there. However, the former point that I brought up was I don't think he's a very smart player. And and there's a difference between being young, dumb, and full of calm or whatever, and just not understanding what's going on. I there there's just some things about Jade McDaniels that that have caused me. He's pushed me into putting him on that list. And I don't want him on that list. I want him to contribute and participate for what we what we're what we're paying them for so that's that's my whole deal it's my timberwolves rent they're still in first place that's great um but i'm as time goes on i'm getting a little a little worried now well you know i get it we're getting close to play like we i think at this point we just want to hit the playoffs like we we are done with the regular season at this point like i'm ready to just i want to see what this team does um because we we've been so excited and this has been by far the best year of Timberwolves basketball I've ever seen in my life <laughs> and we I, we're, we're just antsy we I mean we're we we love our team and we we, we just want to see him succeed what was what the record right now 40 and and how many losses I think we're 40 and 17 17 yeah 40 is that what it is and that's yeah. what OKC is even though OKC has won six in a row right and yeah. but we won five of six okay um we got san antonio i believe tomorrow night i do know that not all of our games i are 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 gonna be the bucks every night or the clippers every night like i i, I think that we still have somewhat soft kind of schedule is that we're, right uh, yeah i think we're like 22nd or 21st in the easiest schedule okay sees ahead of us unfortunately but yeah you never know okay all right, all right.